Welcome everyone, 7.4 solving trig equations. As the name says, we're going to solve these equations and these equations contain trigonometric functions in them. And when we say solve, we need to find x or theta, whatever is the missing variable. Okay. So we'll go to the first one, solve. Three sine x minus two equals 5 sine x minus 1 on the interval 0 to 2. That means when you get your x's, right, the x will be your angle, you know, that sine of an angle. So when you get the angle x, you want the, those angles to lie between 0 and 2 pi. So that is why they give you the interval. All right, so you're going to really, really rely on your algebra skills here to uh, handle this because once you get the x by itself, then uh, you will have to perhaps use the, the trig uh, information that you've learned in this course. So you have um, right now to do it as if you would do it for, a, um, for an algebraic problem. So first, uh, the whole idea is to isolate x. In order to isolate x, we need to collect all the x's together. I have an x on the left, x on the right. So collect them all together. So I want to subtract. An, 5x, 5 sine x on both sides. So that will be negative 2 sine x minus 2 is negative 1. So add 2 on both sides. Negative x is equal to 1. Now get sine x. Let's divide both sides by negative 2. So then we have sine x equals negative half, right? Okay, now this, this was all like algebraic move. Now it's time for us to think in terms of um, uh, trigonometry. So you're asking yourself, sine of what angle will give me a negative half? So go to your unit circle and see negative half. So sine is the y coordinate and you want to see where you get your y coordinate as negative half, you see it here. And you see here, it's 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So then come back here, you say x is 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. You know this is good because this lies in the interval 0 to 2 pi because it was within the one full unit circle. Okay. So that would be your answer. And that is how we solve these trig equations. So it's basically using algebraic techniques. Okay. Five sine x equals three sine x plus root three. Okay. Again, very similar to the previous one we saw. So bring your x's together. Two sine x equals root three. Divide by on both sides sine x is root 3 over 2 um, I forgot to mention that this was also to be in the interval 0 to 2 so uh, again look for the angles where sine x gives you root 3 over 2 sine is the y coordinate and you want root 3 over 2 so you got root 3 over 2 here root 3 over 2 other places you'll get the sign to be negative angles, uh, negative uh, coordinates. So it is pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Okay. So x is equal to pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 in the given interval. Two uh, cosine x plus root three equals zero in the interval zero to two. So here x, uh, you just have one x term, but you need to get x by itself. So subtract root three.
this time we're looking for cosine x what um, uh, angles give us negative root 3 over 2 for cosine negative root 3 over 2 for cosine would be positive uh, would be the x coordinates so negative root 3 over 2 negative root 3 over 2 uh, the other places the x coordinates are positive so for negative root 3 over 2 as the x coordinate it happens at angles 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6 7 cosine x plus 9 equals negative 2 cosine x. Um, we're going to, we're going to add 2 cosine x. So that's 9 cosine x plus 9 equals. You cancel the mouse, that's one. Then subtract nine on both sides. Nine cosine x equals negative nine. Divide by nine on both sides. That gives us cosine x equals negative one. Okay. And then we go again to the unit circle. Cosine, where x coordinate is negative one, happens only here at pi. Okay. So if we go here. Equals pi in the interval. Solve four sine squared theta minus one equals zero, where theta is between zero and two pi. Notice how they are not giving it to you in the interval notation, but in the inequality notation. Nevertheless, we go ahead and uh, solve this. So uh, we want to solve for theta here because theta is the angle. And uh, we add one on both sides. Four sine squared theta is one. Then divide by four. That is sine squared theta. You want sine theta. So sine theta will be plus or minus square root of 1 over 4. That is sine theta will be plus or minus half. Right? Square root of 1 over 4 is half. Now we want to go ahead and look for all the possibilities for theta, for the angle theta, where sine theta takes the values plus half or negative half. So the y coordinate must be plus half or negative half. So we have half, half, negative half, negative half. So we have four in each quadrant, right? Because you, we were allowed to take both the positive and the negative options. So we have pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and collect them. Theta will be Pi over six, five pi over six, and they're all within the uh, zero to two pi interval. Now, if you had to solve for two cosine squared theta plus cosine theta minus 1 equals 0, 0 less than or equal to theta less than 2 pi. Now you have to see in what format this, this looks more complicated, you can't really combine the cosine theta in any way like previously. Therefore you want to use uh, an appropriate algebraic technique and the technique here you would use would be to see if this is, this can be written as quadratic, in, in the quadratic form and then you can factorize them, factorable equations. So see if you can factor, factor them. So we're saying let x be equal to cosine theta. 
So then you have 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. In fact, we saw a similar problem previously in one of the lectures. This factors out. Again, use the factor by grouping technique. This is a trinomial. You will factor by grouping. You use the factor by grouping technique, and uh, you get 2x minus 1 times x plus 1 equals 0. Okay. And uh, because it's now equal to 0, you set each factor to 0. And then you add 1 on both sides. And, uh, you get 2x equals 1. You divide by 2 on both sides x equals half and here you subtract 1 on both sides x equals negative 1 so you get x equals negative 1 x equals half but you know in turn x is cosine theta so cosine theta is equal to half or cosine theta equals negative 1 so now you go back to the unit circle and see for what um, angles you get cosine theta to be half so let's work on that first so the x-coordinate must be half. So the x-coordinate is half here at uh, pi over 3. And again, it is uh, positive half at 5 pi over 3. So pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And for this one, cosine theta equals negative 1. We know that that happens only at pi. So we come back here and that's pi. Collect all your answers and then you say the solutions would be theta as pi over 3, 5 pi over 3 and this pi, all three of them. And this is in the interval. lost track of the count I'll just go number seven <laughs> sine squared theta minus sine theta minus one equals zero zero less than or equal to theta less than two pi once again uh, we'll say let x be equal to sine theta so that we could rewrite this as x squared minus x minus one equals zero now uh, we, we uh, if we use the x method or the factor by grouping method it doesn't work here um, we wouldn't really use the factor by grouping method because the coefficient of x squared is just a 1. Um, but we don't have uh, those two numbers that can be factored. So we will have to use a quadratic formula. Quadrat formula says x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. In our case, um, your a, b, and c are 1, negative 1, and negative 1 respectively, right? Those are the coefficients. So that will be your a position, that will be your b, and that will be your c. Alright, and then when you plug them in, Be very careful with your signs because it's all about how they combine. Go ahead and simplify that. You can pause the video at this point. Simplify it and see if this gives if it gives the same answer as this. But again, this is x, but x is sine x. So sine x, this is x. So sine um, x is sine theta, so sine theta is 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. Now, uh, if we did, so let's separate this, okay? Sine theta is either 1 plus root 5 over 2 or sine theta is 1 minus root 5 over 2. The plus or minus, I split it up. Now, because of the complex nature here, we can actually use the calculator and 
find the sine inverse. So we want to find theta, right? So we do sine inverse of 1 plus 1 plus 1. So theta is sine inverse. use your calculator what you realize is uh, this one 1 plus root 5 over 2 this one happens outside the domain we get an error domain error because your domain can only take values from negative 1 to 1 remember for the inverse for sine inverse function so because it's outside the domain you already can see right it's uh, going outside the domain there therefore um, that uh, has to be eliminated so our, uh, our good answer I should say is approximately negative 0.6662 okay. so you're getting your angle to be a negative angle okay so in other words the sign is negative in quadrant 3 and 4 so we have to find um, uh, using the calculators what the theta will be in those quadrants okay we get a negative angle and we never present our answers in the negative in fact if you used uh, the the calculator you will get approximately negative 38 degrees okay so you never leave your answer like that in a negative angle and um, if you were to kind of see it too right it's uh, negative 38 degrees like this that means your sign is in the fourth quadrant, right? Uh, meaning it's a negative uh, value. So sign is a negative value. And if it's a negative value, the equivalent angles for this should be uh, obtained from quadrants where sign is negative, okay? And sign is negative in quadrants three and four, okay? So sign is negative in quadrants three and four. That means you want to adjust your angle uh, use the reference angle idea to come up with an angle that is positive but sitting in the third or the fourth quadrant okay so a positive angle that produces a negative sine value so we have okay let me quickly point that out to you here before i proceed okay so if you took the calculator and if you did 1 minus root 5, okay. right there you get a negative uh, value over 2. It gives you negative 0.61, okay? Negative 0.61, etc. What is it? 680339. Anyways, that's what I mean by sign being a negative value, okay? So sign is a negative, um, is producing a negative value, and the negative value for sign can happen only in the third and the fourth quadrant. Okay, let me come back here. And um, now we have to adjust it, so for that, theta will be approximately, two pi, You're adding 2 pi to this negative angle, right? So 2 pi plus the 6662, which is basically 2 pi minus 0.6662, which is approximately giving us 5.6170. So that's a positive angle, but that's um, in the fourth quadrant. Um, and then you have the other adjustment would be for the third quadrant that will be pi yeah, this is a negative angle right so minus a neg this negative value which makes it pi plus and that will be approximately 3.8078 so your two um, the two angles you got for 3.8078 and these were uh, values that lied between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. 
solve cosine squared theta plus 5 cosine theta plus 3 equals 0. Again, um, replace uh, your x, your cosine theta with x. x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 0. Um, again, this is not factorable. Therefore, we use the quadratic formula. Uh, in case you were wondering, your a is 1, right? b is 5 and c is 3. That gives us negative 5 plus or minus square root of 13 over 2. And now cosine theta is negative 5 plus root 13 over 2 or cosine theta is negative 5 minus root 13 over 2. And uh, again put this on the calculator and you notice that if you have the plus, right, we get um, an error. No, if you have the minus, we get an error message. So this gives us a because your um, for inverse cosine function so the positive one works okay and uh, for that when we um, do the theta equals cosine inverse of negative 5 plus root 13 over 2 that gives us 2.3423 okay all right, so that gives us the answer. However, you want to go back and see what happens here. Now this one, if you did just negative five plus root 13 over two, that gives us a negative answer. That's negative 0.69722. So cosine is giving us a negative answer. And if you go back to see where cosine will be, cosine is negative uh, in, the, in the third quadrant. Right? Cosine is negative in the, of course, the second and the third quadrant uh, because uh, uh, the all students take calculus tells us that cosine would be negative here and here, the second and the third quadrant. Now 2.3423 is already in quadrant 2, right? This, this angle. Um, if you're not very clear about this, again, see this as um, 0 pi over 2. Let's stretch it out here pi and 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, right? Now look at their equivalent decimal values, okay? That's uh, how you will know where which quadrant this lies in. So you know that, let me write it out here. You know that 0 pi over, uh, I mean pi is 3.14. So 2.3, you know, lies below 3.14. And um, you can do the pi over 2 and that is approximately 1.57. Okay. And then 3 times pi over 2, which is the 90 degrees in the bottom, that gives us 4.7123 and so on. And then 2 times pi would be 6.28. So when it is purely in decimal forms in the radians, then um, having it not just in terms of pi, pi over 2 and all that, you can have them as in numerical form. So 2.3 is in the second quadrant, so we need to find something in the fourth quadrant. And for that, you're using the, uh, uh, the, the reference angle okay, to find the second solution. The second solution will be in the third quadrant. So for that, we have theta. So theta is 2 pi minus this 2.3. 3423. Okay. So again, use the calculator to get the pi uh, value for this. That way you can round it uh, correctly. 3.94088, so 09. And that will be your uh, answer from the third quadrant. 
and so now we can collect all our answers and then we say theta is 2.3423,3.9409 and you can quickly check right it's in the third quadrant because it's a value more than 3.14 but less than 4.71 and uh, and that's how you handle uh, multiple uh, answers in in these kind of uh, problems go to the next problem type so it says solve two exact with an exact answer okay so two cosine squared theta plus three sine theta equals zero cosine theta and sine theta now um, you have a mix of angles right so you cannot use the quadratic technique so we'll have to rely on trig identities we saw the Pythagorean identity uh, the reciprocal identity whichever ones we can use we will use so I want to bring them all in the same function okay so I'm going to use cosine squared theta the Pythagorean identity which is 1 minus sine squared theta plus 3 sine theta because if I get them all in sine then I can use the um, quadratic uh, format so that will be 2 minus 2 sine squared theta plus 3 sine theta equals 0. Now rearrange these terms so you get uh, negative 2 sine squared theta. Because it's quadratic you always arrange them in the uh, in the descending order of powers. Got that. Uh, we can flush out that negative by multiplying throughout both sides by negative. That becomes 2 sine squared theta minus 3 sine theta minus 2 equals 0 right multiply both sides by negative 1 or you can divide both sides by negative 1 if they're equivalent that way you can deal with uh, positive a and um, here again you could use the factor by grouping method where you say let x be sine theta so you get 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0 use the factor by grouping if this fails, then you can go for a quadratic formula. But uh, if this works, good for us. Actually, it works. So you get 2x plus 1 and x minus 2 equals 0. Okay. And then replace your x with uh, sine theta. Uh, now you have to set each factor to 0. So 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0. And um, the other one would be sine theta minus 2 equals 0. Solve for sine theta. That would be negative 1 over 2. In particular, we have to solve for theta. So look for um, all the angles where sine theta gives us a negative half. Negative half happens here, and negative half happens here. 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. The 11 pi, got to be careful there. Alright, now this one on this side, when you solve for sine theta, you get sine theta equals 2, right? There you know it's not going to happen because no way will your sine theta have a value more than 1, right? It has to be between negative 1 and 1. So uh, this is a 2. There is no solution. So the only solution comes from this side, and that will be 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So you'll see a lot of these factoring uh, problems, okay? So apply um, identities wherever required, necessary, and then um, use the algebra techniques. If you are asked to solve sine 2 theta equals root 3 over 2. This is a little interesting here because 
it's a double angle and if it's a double angle the the you want to see again you want to pretend that this was a regular x okay so um, just pretend the 2 theta was some some x so you're asking yourself uh, what um, sign sign of what angle will give me a root 3 over 2 so let's go here sine is the y coordinate so root 3 over 2 is there and root 3 over 2 so pi over 3 and uh, 2 pi over 3 are the two angles that give us this okay? pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 so no matter what this angle could be in this case it is 2 theta the angles we um, uh, ge generated were pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 but we do not want a 2 theta, we want just a theta. So you have to remember to divide by 2 all the angles we have. Okay. So that is an extra step that we've not seen before because we never saw a double angle. That will be pi over 6 and 2 pi over 6, which will then reduce. As pi over 6 and pi over 3 okay. now uh, these are um, these are values that uh, will lie in 0 to 2 pi now if you want to find all the solutions okay not restricting it to this one rotation you want to find all solutions you want to see where pi over 6 and pi over 3 are right pi over 6 and pi over 3 uh, would be in the first quadrant okay and uh, take you here right pi over six and pi over three on the first quadrant this happened to be the first quadrant just because of the division by two because previously we got first quadrant and the third quadrant that that was for two theta but when you divided by two you got them both sitting in the first quadrant and so if you want to keep repeating coming back to this pi over six you have to go around two pi right so uh, if you were trying to put this in uh, general notation, 2 theta would be pi over 3, comma 2 pi over 3, right? But this pi over 3 will repeat every 2 pi. So it is right here. Pi over 3 plus 2 pi. That's for one rotation plus 4 pi for 2 rotations, plus 6 pi for 3 rotations and so on. So that will be 2 pi k. Okay. And therefore, when you divide by 2, this is for all solutions, all possible solutions, not just one rotation. right? And for that, theta will be pi over 6 plus pi k, because here too the 2s will cancel off. Okay. And for the 2 pi over 3, you do a similar argument where 2 theta is 2, 2 pi over 3, and that also has to repeat 2 pi k rotations, right, to get all the possible solutions. And then divide by 2 throughout, because you just want for the theta, and in fact, this also will do. That gives us theta equals pi over 3 plus pi k. So this is when you want to Call, or call out all the possible solutions and sometimes the questions may ask you that they won't just give you one period uh, I mean sorry one rotation they might ask you for all solutions if that's the case you will have this generalized K or N whatever letter you're using uh, to be in included in there so for that you'll have to go back to the original angle which was 2 theta and then derive it from there okay. Now what about tan theta over 2 equals root 3. We'll uh, do this for this interval and then we'll also show it for all uh, solutions. Okay. So once again pretend this theta over 2 was some x. So tan of what angle will give me root 3? So tan is sine over cosine, right? So y coordinate over x coordinate. Y coordinate 
over x coordinate. This is the only place where you have root 3 over 2 over half, which will give us a root 3. Okay, we want a positive um, root 3. And so that can happen again here, where you get the negative over negative, giving you a positive. So it's happening at pi over 3 and uh, 4 pi over 3. So this theta over 2 comes out to be pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. However, we know that because you're taking the tan inverse to get this, right? Tan has, uh, the period for tan is only pi. The tan function is pi. That means you have to stay only within uh, uh, the first quadrant so this will be ruled out so oh oops I'm so sorry so that means you have I wonder what I was thinking um, you have pi over 3 plus just the pi right because it's uh, every pi units and that will be pi times k and that when you multiply, now you want to solve for theta, right? so multiply by 2, that gives us theta equals 2 pi over 3 plus pi k, right? okay, now we are, let's focus on this one, theta over 2 is 4 pi over 3, but I got this from my tan inverse, and if tan inverse, then you know that the restriction on tan inverse is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, isn't it? So I wanted to exit here, not there. <laughs> uh, so because it's negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, this 4 pi over 3 actually lies in the third quadrant, right? 4 pi over 3 was the third quadrant. But we can't accept anything from the third quadrant, we can only accept things from quadrant 4 and quadrant 1. In quadrant 4 too, it has to be in the negative direction. Because of that, this is outside the scope, so this cannot be the answer. So uh, coming back to uh, the, the question itself, if they want it just between 0 to 2 pi, the answer for that, there's only one solution, which is 2 pi over 3. And if they wanted all solutions, there was no restriction on the um, on the interval then your theta theta will be 2 pi over 3 plus pi k oh 2 pi k there was a 2 there plus 2 pi k okay and so uh, that is how you will provide answers when they give you specific directions Next, uh, we'll see if um, we can solve using co-function identities. It was also one of the identities we used before. And uh, here is a problem for that. Find um, the exact solution. For sine 4 theta minus 5 degrees equals cosine 2 theta plus 29 degrees where theta is between 0 and 180 degrees Ooh. all right so uh, here we want to see because they're, they're connecting the sine on the left and cosine on the right co-function identity is the place where they actually um, you know kind of connect okay when I when we say co-function identities we know that if they are co-function identities, their arguments must add up to 90 degrees, right? So co-function means the argument, the angles, angles and the arguments for sine and cosine must add up to 
90 degrees. This makes sense because if you recall, um, in fact, if you recall for sine, sine theta was cosine 90 degrees minus theta. Likewise, cosine theta was sine 90 degrees minus theta. So what we're saying is, if you added this theta and the 90 degrees minus theta, the arguments on both sides, the angles on both sides, right? So theta plus 90 degrees minus theta, this must always give us 90 degrees. That's the argument we are making here. So then if uh, we have sine 4 theta minus 5 degrees, this side and cosine 2 theta plus 29 degrees, 29 degrees. We know that these two arguments must add up to 90 degrees. And that's what we're trying to set up here. So 4 theta minus 5 degrees plus 2 theta plus 29 degrees must be equal to 90 degrees. And from that we will, um, it's, a, it's just um, literally arithmetic. 4 theta plus uh, 2 theta is 6 theta and 29 minus uh, 5, 24 degrees equals 90 degrees. 6 theta, subtract 24 degrees on both sides, that gives us 66 degrees. So theta is 11 degrees. So sometimes co-function identity makes it a whole lot simpler that you really don't have to worry about uh, these complicated uh, uh, algebraic techniques. All right. So with that, we end uh, this lecture, 7.4, and uh, I will see you with the, in, in the lecture on polar um, coordinates. See you soon.